Hey guys, it's Adam Harvey here. Hope you're all doing well. Um, so I'm intending this video to be the first in a series of uh, videos looking at the composition of a short piece of music for a fake movie studio logo. Um, I've created a cheap and cheerful movie studio logo um, just to have something to put music to. And I think this will be really useful, you know, for people maybe just starting out that are looking at how you put uh, music to, to video. Um, I'm going to be using Audio Imperia's Nucleus uh, because it has every instrument uh, or pretty much every instrument. It's built as a starter library and it is uh, a pretty simple, easy to use library, but it also sounds great and it has a lot of um, hidden depth to it. So I thought it'd be a great library to use to create this um, piece of music. So I'm going to go through the whole process. I'm going to go through the template and how I set the template up in, in a bit of detail. Then I'm going to go through my sketching process and then I'm going to go through how I'd actually track everything and arrange the music to make it sound big and orchestral and hopefully lush and then even some of the mixing process as well. I mean I probably won't do an awful lot of mixing but I'll show you some of the techniques that I may use to try and get the most out of the library. Um, yeah so I think we'll dive straight into it. We'll have a look at the movie studio logo that I've done first so that we can see what we're going to be working with. It's really simple and it looks like this. There we go. Um, so just created something uh, with a couple of free videos off Pexels and then added some text to them, did a little bit of animation. Um, you know, it's a bit cheap and cheerful, but it'll do for us. It's just a, a, an example video. Um, so yeah, we'll move on to the template. So I've loaded every instrument in, um, the violins one and two. It actually comes with one violin section. So what I've done is doubled the violin. I added two of those violin sections in. Um, and then the violas, the cello, the bass, and the solo strings, which are the cellos uh, and the violin, cello and violin. I've done the same with the brass. I've basically loaded everything in, all the solo and ensemble patches for the brass, the woodwind, the strings, uh, the pitch percussion, which is the xylophone, marimba, and glock, and then the orchestral percussion. We have timpani and then cymbals and snares and bass drums and stuff like that. Then we have the whole choir. I've loaded all them in. Um, and basically, uh, Nucleus and Audio Imperius libraries use a really interesting um, system where they delay the sample start, or there's an option to delay the sample start to create more realistic legatos and more flowing lines. Now, I won't go into the thinking behind this and how this works. Um, I'll link to some videos in the description below that will give you uh, a better description than I could of how these things work. But suffice to say, that introduces a small delay in playback. So for example, if I play a note, we get a quarter of a second delay. So what I can't do easily um, when I'm creating music with this current template is switch between, or is play lines in, because obviously there's a quarter of a second delay, it makes things hard to play. I'll give you an example. Um, now, like I said, the reason for this is because it ultimately creates more realistic um, lines. There are several workarounds here. There's, you know, this is all taken care of in Nucleus, so you can completely eliminate this delay, so you can play in real time, you can create a shorter delay, whatever. But the workaround that I've used is to um, basically put the whole library in and then create a quarter of a second, a 250 millisecond uh, compensation time. So basically there's a 250 millisecond delay in the notes, and then I've compensated for that by creating a compensation here up in the uh, MIDI channel. But the way I've got arranged it in terms of sketching is that I've created um, a tight orchestra template, which is basically an ensemble strings, woodwind, brass, and choir. This tight orchestra comes with Nucleus, uh, and this tight orchestra has no um, sample start delay time in it. So it's real time pretty much if I play. <laughs> As you can see here, there's nothing in there. Which is great. Um, so I can just play straight into this. And I also have a piano, which is a free piano from Spitfire Audio Labs that I'm using just to start sketching stuff out, which obviously has no delay either. Um, 
So yeah, that's basically how I'm going to work. I'm going to use the piano to sketch stuff out. Then I'm going to probably put it into the Thai orchestra ensemble patches um, just to get a feel for what instruments, what sections I want to use. And then eventually I'll either play, um, play or move stuff into the main library, which has the much more realistic legato and so on. And as I say, there are workarounds. You could do it so that you only add the sample delays um, to these individual instruments at the end of your um, writing process once you're done with everything. But this was the way that I wanted to work because I didn't want to have to go through each individual instrument at the end and add the MIDI compensation and the sample start delay. If this sounds a bit confusing to you, don't worry, it's a simple process. But as I say, I'll, I'll leave some links in the description to people that can describe it more eloquently than I can. Um, suffice to say, I have every instrument in here ready to go. I have my tight orchestra um, here, which is basically the real-time orchestra I can play with. And um, yeah, and then just to look at my mixer channels. So I have every single instrument and every single tight ensemble patch on a separate channel um, here, which is great. And then each one of these feeds into, as you can see, I've got different groups up here, pitch, percussion, woodwind, and so on. If we go to the end, um, there's a strings, brass, woodwind, pitch percussion, orchestral percussion, vocal, um, group channels. So everything goes into a group channel. So all the strings go into the strings, all the woodwind go into the woodwind, etc. Um, and then I also have a reverb for every single um, group and they feed back into the group channels. So the string reverb goes into the strings, for example. Um, the reason that I do it this way is basically sometimes you might want to create what are called stems um, or to isolate certain groups of instruments. That's often needed when you're exporting music for media. They might say we want all the, you know, the groups separately so that we can um, only use the strings or mix the strings and the percussion differently to how they're mixed in the master score. Um, so the more options you can give yourself in your template, the better. And this is uh, pretty flexible, so obviously I can export any individual instrument. I could also export groups and I can also export the master which is basically the stereo of everything uh, here and I can also uh, add in or take a reverb if I wanted to for each individual group as well. So just to give you an example in my ancient Cubase I will bring this along. Here you can see everything is nicely laid out now. So if somebody said to me oh we love your track but we just want the strings and the percussion I could very easily just export the orchestral percussion and the strings um, and send them over and I could export stuff without reverb or I, if somebody said I just want the trumpet I can come down to the solo trumpet just export that just makes things a lot easier um, to work with yes yeah, so everything is pretty much good to go really you know there's no I don't have to worry afterwards about connecting everything together and it's good to think about this when you're creating templates um you know it, it's a good habit to get into to think how does everything flow the the individual instruments flow into the groups and then the groups will ultimately flow into the master and then reverb is optional some people like to put reverb on insert channels um some people like to just send to one reverb or two reverbs and have a kind of master reverb setup i have uh, reverbs for every section and the reason for that is again because of the stem system um, often you want to export just the strings or just the brass and if you have a master reverb where which every instrument's going through, sometimes that can create mess and blur and the, the reverb can export with different instrument groups in there and so on. Having a different reverb for every single section just keeps everything um, nice and simple. And as you can see, actually the reverbs are the same. So here's the string reverb, 2.4 second um, reverb time, 8 millisecond delay, and then exactly the same for the brass and everything else. So they're the same reverb, but they're on different channels, which makes it easier for me to isolate everything um, together. So that's a little introduction to the template. And if you have any questions, obviously put them in the comments and I'll um, answer them in more detail or create a video that goes into more detail. Um, yeah, so to go back to the uh, composing side of things. So if I was to have been given this sort of video by a producer or a director or somebody who wanted me to write music for it. Um, I'd obviously bring it, have a chat with them about what they expected musically, um, what their ambitions were, and then bring it into the project and just you know, watch it through a few times. Um, so, you know, we're obviously watching it through now. Um, let's just presume that 
the client wants a big, you know, orchestral sound, that kind of classic movie studio logo sound. Um, so the whole orchestra. And yeah, I mean, there's not really many hit points here in terms of things to aim for. But broadly speaking, you probably want the music to reach a climax as the logo titles come up around here. So, yeah, there's only really one hit point, and it's not an exact one, but somewhere around here we want everything to sort of reach a climax and then either taper out or come to a big crescendo here, and then, yeah, I think I'll come to a big crescendo around the time that the planet disappears, and then we'll have some kind of fade out with a pad or just the end of the, you know, maybe the symbols or something. So that's pretty straightforward. And then, yeah, I have the piano here to do exactly what every composer will do, is just to watch through and to start to play with this. So, you know, we know we want the kind of big movie sound. Um, so I will just go through and start playing stuff. So I'm gonna probably go for C here. Oh, I'm recording, I shouldn't really be recording. And then, yeah, you'll just, hopefully as a composer, you'll start to watch and hear stuff happening in your head. So I'm hearing kind of obviously a big, bright, optimistic um, thing. So the extent of my piano playing right there. Yeah, I'm starting to hear even worse than usual today um, but yeah like I, I'm not a, a, a fantastic pianist at all I've never been trained um, I'm better than I used to be but when it comes to composing stuff I'm still pretty pretty rough I'm not one of those people that can just sit down and start playing huge flowing things I hear stuff in my head then it takes me some time to figure it out so I'm just going through it something like that you can kind of hear what I'm aiming for um, I think and how I would do things then is because I'm not a great pianist I would probably just play in stuff line by line um, so I'm going to play in the melody first that I'm hearing uh, and I won't use a click track at this stage because you know I'm just spitballing ideas note there wasn't what I was hoping for. Oh actually maybe dun, 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 dun. and then as that disappears I'm gonna have something like, yeah, something like that. I'll pop that in there.
let's just try and get some chords in here now. You can see what I've done is I've literally just playing layer over layer over layer here um, and then I can combine them together if I want to glue them together which I've just done here I'll move this so let's have a little listen oh let's also move that because that's way out of time Yeah, that's, that's not sounding too bad. I'm hearing a counter melody as well, so let's chuck that in. So maybe something like... Maybe something like that. Let's just give it a go and see. percent sure so we're just going to start taking out some of these repeat notes just so not getting Have a look with that against the video. Yeah, it's rough, but you know, you can kind of hear possibly the idea that I'm going for, and I, I kind of like some of the ideas here. I always try and sketch. I mean, I'm one of those people that doesn't like. I think like a lot of composers, you get an idea and before you know it, you're straight in there writing in the French horns and the flute solos and spending an hour doing the harp, you know, glissandos and stuff. It's, I think it's a good discipline to get into, to sketch and sketch at a piano. Um, and it's an interesting thing, actually, going back to this template, what most old school orchestral composers would do, the kind of composer that would write this kind of big glitzy orchestral music, it's probably not too dissimilar to what this template is set up to do. Um, traditionally, they would write at a piano. Obviously, somebody like a John Williams or a Jerry Goldsmith wasn't using Cubase, you know, or Logic or anything. Um, I know in John Williams' case, he just writes at the piano, watches um, the film through, you know, on the computer, on the, on the old-fashioned movie, you know, playback thing, watches it through, has a discussion with the director about the hit points and the emotions of the music and what the music needs to accomplish. 
and then we'll just play through you know we'll spend a few hours playing through the scene at the piano he's obviously an incredible pianist and an incredible composer um, so can probably fly through some of these ideas but what those composers would tend to do is to write at the piano to get a sense of the, the most important things you know the the melodies the rhythm the hit points, the, the transitions of the music, some of the harmonies and the counter melodies and some of those ideas. And as you're writing those things, as a composer, you'll begin to get a sense that this is a French horn, you know, this is a big trumpet section, this is the full orchestra, this is just the woodwinds, this is going to be percussion and choir and so on. You just hear those things in your head, I think. We all know that feeling of, you know, starting to feel the music happen inside our heads. Um, and then what would usually happen is that these composers wouldn't sit there and write out the entire sheet music because, you know, you just don't have the time. You have to be writing a minimum two, three minutes of music a day, uh, if not a lot more. And, of course, back then when everything was done by hand or if you're an old-fashioned composer that writes by hand, there's no way you can sit there and write in every single line um, for two or three minutes of music a day and compose that music. It's just not going to happen. So what they will tend to do is use what are called short scores or set sketches, um, and they will tend to be not too dissimilar to this um, template that I have here, the tight. So they would tend to be in either four to eight um, staves, and that would be the strings, the woodwinds, the brass, and then any extra instruments. Sometimes they'd be um, divided into low strings and high strings, low woodwinds, high woodwinds, etc. But broadly speaking, they will sketch in, they will say, well, you know, this is what the strings need to do. They need to play these chords and these melodies and uh, so on and so forth. Maybe this ostinato, that arpeggio, whatever it might be. Um, and then they will leave the exact decisions on what instruments and what combinations of instruments are playing for later down the line, or perhaps even get an orchestrator to work with them to do that. But often they will use um, these short scores or sketch scores to, um, to flesh out their idea from the piano stage to the um, full orchestra stage. So that's the stage that we'll go to next. I'll spend a bit more time refining this um, and probably put the tempo map in, which I'll, I'll show you soon. And then we will move from here to start thinking about the sketch. You know, what, what, what actually, you know, what groups of instruments are playing, what lines, how do we, you know, what kind of sound do we want at every single point? And then we'll sketch in and kind of do it in a similar way to the old fashioned composing system where we go from the piano to the bigger sketch and then eventually we'll, we'll orchestrate the big lines in and get, get it sounding as good as we possibly can. Um, yeah, so I'm going to spend a little bit more time refining this sketch. I mean, I'm not going to refine it too much because I'm not a great piano player. There's no point trying to craft it into a wonderful piano sound because it doesn't really matter. What I need is enough to know the structure of the whole music. And going back, that's why I think a sketch is so important because I used to make the mistake of getting excited about the melody. I'd start writing a piece of music and think, oh, this is sounding great. You know, I've got six bars and they're really cool bars and this melody is going to sound great and this choir is going to sing and then the timpani is going to blare and the cymbals are going to crash and before I knew it I'd be into this stage and I'd be putting in that choir and I'd be writing in that big French horn melody and I'd be putting in that timpani and I get it all sounding really good I think oh this is great it sounds you know detailed and big and huge but the problem was I had six bars and I had another 106 bars to write you know and that's not a good position to be in because it doesn't matter how good any one section of the music is. There are two big questions. Does it work for the video in front of you or the media in front of you? And is it structurally right? You know, can, does it develop in the way um, that is satisfying for the project? And that's always the big thing as a music composer. Don't get bogged down with the details in the early stages. Try and get into the discipline of sketching, no matter how simplistic i mean listen to mine it's really really simplistic and poorly played but i now have a sketch of the whole project um and before i go to this stage of putting it into the orchestra i will just spend maybe another in this case because it's a short piece of music another half hour you know just listening back through this along with the video and thinking about it you know imagining how it's going to sound in my head Yeah, I mean, there's probably a lot of piano players watching this cringing at how bad that is. But it doesn't matter because that's not what's going to be heard and that's not what's important. What's important is I know how the music is going to develop um, for every second of this composition there. And look, if I start writing it in and I decide to make a chord change or I decide to change some of the tempo or some of the structure, that's fine. But it's always good to be able to go back 
to a basic sketch of the whole composition. Um, because the worst thing you can do is get, you know, these first three bars sounding great and then have no idea what happens for the rest of it. Because I've been in that situation before of having a great six seconds of music, you know, that's written across 15 different channels here and then no idea what I'm going to do with it next. And yeah, it's a good for, for composers starting out there, try and get into the discipline of getting this part right first. You know, can you put the music on one piano line or just a couple of instruments? and then develop it out from there, uh, particularly when you're writing huge orchestral music, because the more instruments and choices you have, the more you're gonna bog yourself down in the later stages if you don't have this basic structural part right. So there we have some of my thoughts on sketching and the template that I'm using. And here I have the um, music a little bit more sketched out, not that much more. also have this with the click track now as you can see here I put the click track in I basically just timed it all out I always leave this first bar or sometimes a couple of bars blank just to give myself some leading time um, and I also do a fair bit of movement in the click track to give it that kind of you know a conductor would have that natural um, you know sense of, of, of rhythm and, and they speed up and slow down try and add that into your tracks particularly orchestral stuff um, because it will just raise at that extra level. And it's good to get that done early on in the process. Um, you can do it later at any time, but it's good to have the timings where you want them to be as early as possible. So with the click, go and this sketch I'm still not 100% sure about maybe some of the harmony and, and, and chord stuff going on here but you know there does come a stage where I think you're ready to move on whatever happens I'm pretty sure it's going to end up 80-90% similar to this sketch and that some of the melodies or counter melodies whatever may change a little bit but you know I'm happy enough with this sketch in terms of starting to move forward with the the orchestral sketch and then we can revisit some of these um, sort of potential problem areas and just refine them as we go. So yeah I think that's probably a good introduction to where I would start with something like this. As I say it's only a short piece so obviously it's not quite as complicated as receiving a six minute TV scene or something. Um, but it still has all those same basic elements of how you would work, whether you were working with a 20 second piece or a 20 minute piece. This is how you would work. You would watch it through. You would maybe talk with the director or the producer about the requirements. I mean, in this case, I made this, so I'm also making the decisions about the, uh, the sound and the style and the hit points. But ordinarily, you'd have what's called a spotting session or something similar where you'd sit down and watch the video and say, well, you know, what does the client want? Uh, you might sit down and work with a client who says, hey, I don't like any of that old-fashioned orchestral stuff. Give me synths or rock or something completely different, you know. But in this case, I've chosen to go for that classic sort of Universal Studios Paramount logo sound, you know, the full orchestra. Um, and that's what I've come up with so far, this little piano sketch. In the next video, we're going to go from piano sketch to the orchestral sketch. So we're going to take it from this section here. And we're going to start putting um, these lines into the various instrument groups. So, for example, this first melody. I'm hearing potentially solo French horn or ensemble French horns, maybe a solo trumpet. I'm not sure, but I'm hearing brass here. We're probably going to have some strings playing. But we'll go through that process of how do you take big block chords and big, you know, sort of simple melodies and start making decisions about where to put them in the orchestra. A lot of it's going to be personal choice, what you hear in your head and what you want you know the end result to sound like and then some of it's also going to be you know common sense orchestral decisions for example you're unlikely to be putting you know something like this in i don't know uh, you know contrabassoon i mean it's not going to get that high but you know you, there's going to be some sensible decisions that you make about what instruments you use for different lines um, but we'll look into more detail about how to start orchestrating this and arranging it 
Uh, and then when we have an arrangement that we're happy with, we're going to take that and put it on the full orchestra and we'll go into more detail about how we craft the lines uh, for each individual instrument, how we use key switches to get the most realism out of those instruments and we use mod wheel data and expression data and so on to craft those lines. And also how you orchestrate for an orchestra because a lot of the um, tips and techniques for getting good orchestral music is to use good orchestral techniques that would be used by any orchestrator or composer for a full orchestra. Um, there are some things that you would tend to do with instruments and tend not to do with instruments or instrument groups. There are obviously no hard and fast rules, but there are good ways to get that big traditional symphonic sound out of your uh, orchestra. And we'll look at some of those techniques. I'm by no means the most accomplished orchestrator, but I've done it enough to maybe be able to give you some good ideas about how you would use and voice chords and voice harmonies and melodies and so on. Um, so we'll, yeah, we'll go through that whole process, but I hope this has been useful for now. In the meantime, if you do have any questions or comments, leave them below. And also if you guys uh, want more content, feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, that will let me know that there's people out there that want me to carry on with this series and future series. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot for watching guys. I hope this has been useful. If you have any other questions, let me know. Um, but in the meantime, happy composing. I will speak to you soon.